With this video, we begin an exploration of gases and their properties. All right, it turns out that we first try to focus on gases uh, rather than liquids and solids because gases are far easier to understand. As it turns out, uh, when you're at constant or, or at ambient temperature and pressure, uh, what happens is that uh, the separation between two gas molecules is so large compared to the size of the uh, particles okay, that uh, there's actually no interactions between those gas particles. And that's not the case when you have a liquid where uh, a gas or a liquid uh, molecule is going to be surrounded by other molecules of the liquid and interacting with them in a solid where you will have exactly the same. Right? So it's the absence of interactions between uh, gas particles that make gases really easy to understand. Okay? Now it turns out that to specify completely uh, the state of a gas, the properties of a gas, we need to specify the following quantities. Okay? We need to specify the pressure, we need to specify the temperature, we need to specify the volume and then the amount of gas, which is generally provided by the number of moles. Okay? Uh, the number of moles is easy to understand. The volume uh, uh, that a gas occupies is also very easy to understand. The temperature, we also have a pretty uh, good uh, working definition for what pr uh, temperature is. And we just have to uh, stop one second here and define what pressure is. Everybody knows the difference between a gas at low pressure and a gas at high pressure. Okay, but to quantify that a little bit better, we can actually uh, go back to the definition of pressure and say that pressure is simply force over area. Okay. Uh, later on, when we study something called kinetic theory of gases, we will actually understand what that really means. For now, we just simply uh, need that uh, classical physics definition of what pressure is. Now, when thinking about the units of pressure, okay, uh, this can actually come in very many flavors. The SA uh, unit of pressure is the Pascal, which is used quite a lot in physical chemistry, not so much in general chemistry. In general chemistry, we prefer to use uh, atmospheres. Okay, but there are other units like bar, there's also uh, tor, there's millimeter of mercury. And if you go and check the weather forecast, pressures are usually uh, uh, given in millibar or perhaps bar. Well, you can convert very easily between these units of pressure. Okay, uh, and those conversion factors will provide it to you, to you so you don't need to memorize them. Okay, now that we understand the four quantities that you need to specify to fully characterize uh, uh, gas, okay, we're going to see the gas loss. It turns out that there's relationships between these uh, four quantities, which is what the gas loss provide. Okay, so uh, the first gas law that we're going to study is Boyle's uh, gas law. All right, so let's see what Boyle was uh, trying to get at. All right, so Boyle study gas uh, or gases. Okay, many years ago, this was the mid 1600s. Okay, and the idea is that uh, uh, what Boyle found out is that if you apply some pressure on a gas, okay, and you go by some volume, the the game that you can play here is you can double the pressure, for example, and see what happens in the volume. Okay, so you increase uh, uh, the pressure applied on this. Maybe we are putting a weight or uh, by doing some, some other uh, uh, sort of pressure increase, and it turns out that the volume halves. Okay? Now, this experiment is done with a cylinder uh, in which you have a movable uh, piston that can go, uh, go up and down without any friction. Okay, notice that in this piston you actually can't have any gas molecules that escape. Okay, and in this particular experiment, the temperature is also constant. Okay, so under these conditions, again, when you double the pressure, the volume halves. And what that means is that Boyle's law can be uh, expressed as the product of the pressure and the volume is constant as long as the number of moles and uh, the temperature are constant. And again, these are experiments that are now about uh, almost 400 years old. Okay? All right, so that's the first experiment that tells you the relationship between two of these quantities that we need to specify gases. All right, so let's look at the second uh, gas law. This is the gas by uh, Charles. All right, and uh, we go back to these uh, games that we play with gases. And in this case, you actually have a slightly different, uh, different game that you're going to play. Right, so the idea is that you have this gas that occupies some volume, okay, and uh, you're applying some pressure uh, here. Now, what you're going to do is uh, not change the pressure, which is what we did with uh, uh, what Charles did with uh, uh, his experiments. Instead, what you're actually going to do 
is you're going to change the temperature of this gas without uh, changing the pressure. Okay, so the pressure is going to be the same. No change to the pressure. And there's no change to the number of molecules either, right? So the number of gas particles that you have is going to be the same uh, initially and at the end uh, because these gas molecules can't escape that cylinder. Now the idea is that uh, you're initially at some temperature. So what you can do is elevate the temperature of the gas and see what happens to the volume. And it turns out that if you double the temperature, then the volume uh, doubles as well. Okay? So that gives you another law. And the law is that the volume is directly proportional to the temperature. Okay, so it's T times a constant. And this happens as long as the number of uh, molecules or moles don't, doesn't change, and the pressure also doesn't change. Okay, that is the uh, uh, second gas law. And this happened uh, a couple hundred years after, uh, actually about 100 years after that, this was almost the 1800s now. Okay, the last law that we're going to be uh, looking at here, the experiments, uh, is uh, something that we have already seen. This is Avogadro's law, which initially was actually a hypothesis. Okay. All right, so Avogadro, uh, if we remember what uh, the thinking was, uh, uh, is as follows. Okay, you have here uh, some pressure. Okay, you have your gas, which is occupying here some volume. And then uh, the idea is as follows you now are going to be able to manipulate the amount of gas, okay, and, and the experiment is to actually increment, okay, the amount of molecules that you put uh, into this cylinder. Okay, so the, the finding was that if you double the number of molecules that you have, the volume also doubles. Okay, so initially you have a number of molecules of most n, okay, and it turns out that uh, if you double the molecule, the number of molecules, then the volume doubles as well, okay? And this happens as long as you don't change the temperature, and the uh, sorry the pressure, and then the temperature has to be also constant. Okay, so we can uh, then write what Avogadro's law is, and that is that well uh, the volume and the number of moles are directly proportional as long as the pressure and the temperature are constant. And this happened uh, around 1800 or so. All right, so now we can actually uh, put all of these laws together and come up with a unit law that actually relates the three of them. Okay, it's very easy to see that all these can be crystallized in an equation that look like, looks like this. Okay, uh, where B is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of mol uh, moles, T is temperature, and R is something that we call the gas constant. Okay, the gas constant uh, comes in various flavors. Okay, uh, if you're using SA units, your calculations, the value of R is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. But if you're using uh, atmospheres for pressure and then liters for volume, okay, and the temperature is in Kelvin, and here you're using moles, then that R happens to be 0 0.08206 atmosphere liter over mole Kelvin. Okay, you're saying, so again, which one you choose uh, depends on what the units of your calculations are. If you're using SA units, okay, which will require, require you to use Pascal for pressure, cubic meter for volume, then here mole and temperature in Kelvin, then you would be using that one. Now, in general chemistry, we're really going to be using SA units. It's far more common to use atmospheres uh, as a unit of pressure, liters as a unit of volume, moles, and then Kelvin, and that means that that's the value of R that you need to use. All right, so uh, the problems that we're actually going to be uh, looking at in the homework for uh, an illustration of these gas laws is going to be one in which we're going to have uh, uh, some gases okay, into uh, containers, and then we're going to be doing various things to those gases. Okay, maybe we are changing the pressure and the temperature by holding fixed the number of volume, uh, the number of moles and the volume or uh, changing any of these properties, any two of these properties, or perhaps three, and then hold and fix the other one. So the key to try to uh, understand those problems is to recognize what is being hold fixed and what is changing. 
Okay, if you understand that, then you can use uh, this equation in the initial state and that equation in the final state. There will be something that is constant in these expressions. So you can equate it both at the initial state and the final state and then solve for the variable that you're actually uh, being asked. All right, so in this video, we have uh, introduced gases and we have introduced uh, the gas laws that give you relationships between the pressure, temperature, volume, and number of moles.